We have just two days until our van needs to be out of the US. And we've got to cross the border without any of our vehicle paperwork. What could go wrong? Three years ago, we left the UK in our 18-year-old van Trudy to attempt to drive around the world. And after spending the past year exploring North America, we're getting ready to ship Trudy to Japan. We had a plan, but over the last couple of weeks, life threw us some real curveballs. How do I get my paperwork back? We'd spent a couple of weeks in Tijuana getting maintenance work done to ensure Trudy was in the best condition for the next leg of the adventure. Whilst we were there, the shipping agent told us that the US Border Protection in Long Beach needed our original vehicle documents sent, but we couldn't because we needed them to cross back into the US. After the work on Trudy was completed, we crossed the border, headed to the nearest courier office to post the documents to the shipping agent, but when we returned back to the van, the door lock had completely broken. I can't close the door. We couldn't close the door or lock the van. With Trudy's permission to be in the US and her insurance running out, this was the last thing we needed, especially as the new parts had to be ordered from Europe. The following week, the shipping agent told us that due to bad weather in Texas, she hadn't posted the document to Border Force immediately, and she didn't know if customs would clear our van in time for the drop-off. Shortly after, the parts arrived, and without our original vehicle documents, we headed back to Mexico to get the door fixed by Ricardo, the mechanic in Tijuana who'd been working on Trudy. Within half an hour, he'd fixed the door. With a deadline of just two days until we have to drop our belongings and Trudy off, we leave the garage to head back towards the US border without our original vehicle paperwork. Will customs clear our van in time? The next few days are going to be interesting. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. Let us begin. Mother Teresa. Okay, we're heading back through Tijuana. We're so lucky to have contacts like Ricardo, and uh, we just had a yeah, we just had such a nice night hanging out last night. And uh, okay, so now we're heading back. We're going to try and cross over the uh, U.S. border again. Hopefully that all goes smoothly because you know our record with border crossings. Bit of a party chicken place for the morning. Got grey skies today, and uh, it's Saturday, so the traffic in Tijuana isn't too bad at the moment. winding through the back roads. Oh my God, look at the hole in that road. Jeez, that's a bit of a hole there. Uh, what? Yeah, wait. Google Maps is going mad. It keeps wanting me to turn, but this is the way we came last time. Winding our way through the uh, streets of Tijuana. Mind the stop sign there. Turn left, turn left, then turn left. I've missed the potholes on the roller coaster rides and down we go. Head northwest. Hold on, there's a man coming in the road. This is the this is the least steep road. Don't know whether you can see but there's a guy juggling machetes. Well, this is a bit chaotic. So we're going around here and taking the second right. Oh great, the traffic lights just changed. Just keep edging. <laughs> oh my. Trudy sandwich, Trudy sandwich. Trudy sandwich to stay in this lane. Slight right. I'm not sure how we've ended up in a lane. We're normally over there. The one-way systems around the border were quite confusing. It was at this point that we realized we'd taken a wrong turn and had no way of joining the growing queue for the border. Where the hell are we going? Oh, there's, that's the security, that's the crossing. 
Okay, we'll have to go. San Diego. Centro, San, Di San Diego, head yeah. west. Pedestrian. That's pedestrian. We're on the wrong side of the road still. <laughs> Never mind. I would not want to be a truck driver. I've seen the size of that truck. How the hell are they supposed to turn out on this road? I would love to have a go in a truck like it's that. It's massive. Just trying to get the angle, isn't it? San Diego. Keep right at the fork. Straight. Yeah, this is right. This is right. I think this is right. This will hit the border, just stay in this bit. Yep, the roads to the border crossing are usually quite hectic, with locals trying to get the last bit of trade from tourists heading back to the US. And they do sell some pretty random stuff. Puppy. From puppies being sold to <laughs> just crazy. So we just sat here looking at the, uh, the stores and what they sell. And there is a serious eclectic mix of stuff Stuff. and I haven't actually seen any car stop to go into the stores but there's like Jesus statues there's Chucky dolls there's a life-size skeleton there there's life-size statues of Jesus there's I don't know baseball caps tortoises Mario brother there's like a pig a pig in a flowery dress who doesn't need a life-size skeleton you might be like a medical student and you want to know about the bones yeah i don't know it's just it just seems like mad stuff they're selling yep we're not the only ones going down the wrong lane these guys went down the wrong fast lane they're all reversing back through the barrier that's hilarious uh oh oh that's close <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> right in front of the police. <laughs> yeah, we're still queued up. It's rammed, but it is the weekend. So the queue took about an hour and a half, but we are back in the US. So, so far today, our life is going as planned. Okay. Good morning, it is bright and early this morning. It's Monday morning. Today is the day that we have to drop the van, all of our stuff, get to a hotel in preparation for leaving the US and heading to Japan. It's gonna be an absolutely crazy day. Yeah. And the first thing we have to do is go back to Marianne's cousin's house to finish loading the boxes, get the duvet packed and everything else in the van. So we have no time to waste. Let's hit the road. So we spent the weekend at a campsite just outside of Alpine with two lots of our Patreons, Janet and John and Mr. and Mrs. Pete. We had so much fun. First thing I gotta do is drop the campsite key back off. Okay, we are nearly there. The last few boxes are being taped up. We've said goodbye to uh, cousin David and Jana Thank you very much for your hospitality. When you watch this you video, are. you guys are rock stars for letting us use your house as a base. We've got some boxes there, bags, more boxes on my bed. We're getting there. We're gonna go and meet Mr. and Mrs. P, the tribe members that we've been camping with at the weekend at Starbucks. And we're gonna sort of road trip up towards uh, Las Vegas this morning. But we need to get cracking. Las Vegas? Oh, not Las Vegas, Los Angeles. Okay, we're all loading up. We're hitting the road. So first stop is to say goodbye to Mr. and Mrs. P, which who is just down the road. Second stop is to drop the boxes off at the port. Third stop is to drop our Jackery power banks off to a friend's house because we can't take them to Japan with us. Long story. Next stop is heading up to the port to drop Trudy off. And then the final stop of the day is getting an Uber another hour or so back into LA to the uh, hotel that we've booked for tonight. If you need Tread the Globe as a removal box delivery, <laughs> There you go, we've got it covered. It's like a game of Tetris. Okay, stop near David's trash can because I've got to bend the trash. Right. <laughs> 
we don't need. I don't think we've got time to stop for coffee now. So, you may recognise Mr and Mrs P from an episode we did in Seattle. We went out for a Turkish lunch. Morning guys! Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> feeling this morning we're good how are you <laughs> a bit tired but <laughs> these guys have been camping with us for the weekend and look at this van that they've rented down here in california i reckon that's a pretty cool it's art great job. job thanks for coming to see us thank you so much our pleasure thank, thank you, so you. Thank it's you been so lovely much. to catch up it was great one of the things you do have to do to ship is have your propane tank empty and your gas tank, your fuel tank on under a quarter. So at the moment it's somewhere between a quarter and half. The propane tank, we had the gas rings on all yesterday evening while we were in the van and then we've had the heated on full blast all night with the windows open. The heating is still going and uh, which is why I'm in a t-shirt even though it's quite chilly outside and uh, it should be empty by the time we get to the port in a few hours because uh, it's already flashing like low warning. So uh, we've planned that pretty good, I think. Right, so the first stop is two hours and 23 minutes away, according to Google. So I'm sure LA uh, rush hour traffic is gonna slow us down this morning. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad. First delay of the, uh, the day. They're loading pallets on the back of a truck. <laughs> there you go. After all the confusion that we've had over the last couple of weeks trying to sort out this shipping and all the boxes and the, you, we've got the flights and the hotel room and just so many things to think about. If it actually goes smoothly today, it will be a miracle. And uh, we booked the hotel room tonight for two nights, uh, just in case if something is delayed for a day because we didn't want to miss the flights. So uh, yeah, a bit of a crazy nerve wracking day for us. It was so nice over the weekend. Mr. and Mrs. P actually flew down from Seattle to rent that van uh, to hang out with us for the weekend. And uh, also a huge thanks to Janet and John who uh, drove down from LA to spend the, uh, the weekend with us. So just looking ahead, there's just this bank of black cloud here. It's really weird. Looks a little bit like the, uh, the San Francisco mist we had that time. It does feel funny that today is the last day we're going to be driving Trini and the next day <laughs> you're going to be picking her up in Tokyo. <laughs> That's nuts, is that not nuts? It's really funny because so many people have said to me, yeah, but you'll be driving on the right side of the road now. And I'm like, but I've been on this side of the road yeah, for that's so long. True. It's going to actually feel weird to go back to that. But I can practice in England. Well, we've still got an hour and 46 minutes to go and the traffic's just getting heavier and heavier. <laughs> it is what it is, right, love? It is what it is. You can't do anything, you just got to go with it. Okay, well, we've just entered the fog. That dark sky is around us now. It is like mizzle, like like coastal fog, isn't it? Yeah, it's that big. I think this is the biggest road we've been on. Hard shoulder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a hard shoulder. That's mad. This is the stuff that you see in the movies. You know when the helicopters are like <laughs> in the car chases and you have these epic Los Angeles like road scenes. This is it. Okay, so we're just coming off. We're heading to Long Beach. A bit misty this morning, but that is LA. A massive city. City of the angels. Okay, we now have half a mile to go. <sighs> Nearly there, fingers crossed. Okay, according to Google Maps, we are here. 
but I'm not convinced we're in the right place. We'll go and find out. Okay, so slightly confusing because that's 2201, which it says on our shipping dock receipt, but the, the company isn't there. They're in the building opposite, so we they're have to in, go there. They're at 2220. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, this looks better. This looks more like a shipping ship code, says on the side. Okay. All the heat is still working. <laughs> okay, after about 15 minutes, everybody was super helpful. We got so lost. There's a massive warehouse, warehouses. So they've given us a number, they've done our paperwork, they've told us to drive around a park by the ramp, um, which is where we're going now. It says just park round, but I don't know where. <laughs> We're going to dock 18 drop for off. shipping to drop some boxes off. We've just seen the lovely lady giving us this and I have to Thank you. you. See how big this place is? <laughs> by the ramp, love, by the ramp. Where's the ramp? Where's the ramp? Oh, there's the ramp. Somebody's by the ramp. Okay, time to drop off. So Marion's just gone to check whether we put the boxes <laughs> up there or whether they're going to bring a pallet or okay we got the pallet delivered and now we've got to try it's a bit like jenga love tetris isn't it isn't tetris. It tetris okay let's see what we can do don't be getting dizzy on me <laughs> <laughs> He's done that before. I stood watching him, thinking how crazy it was that everything we own on the road is in just 10 boxes and fits onto one pallet. Okay, so that actually ended up being really smooth. John, the guy, was a legend. The manager here, he wrapped up the pallet, he sorted us out. He suggested rather than doing it as individual boxes, he says, just book it as one pallet because what happens is if it's individual boxes, they will take them off and mix them with other boxes to make a pallet. And he said the chances of you losing your A box or two is much higher. So we just decided just wrap it all as one pallet. It's a fixed unit. If it costs a bit more, it costs a bit more. Right. So we're all good. And we've got we've got our dock receipt all signed ready. So uh, now we have to go and drop off our jackery and solar panels to a friend's house. Okay, so the thing is, we're almost out of gas and we don't want to end up going to uh, Japan with an empty tank. So we've just put $10 in. The question is, is it still under a quarter? Yes, it's bang on a quarter. Bang on a quarter. Perfect. Just getting our first glimpse of the uh, LA skyline there in the distance. Welcome to downtown LA. Okay, next section done. The jackeries are dropped off. Unfortunately, you can't ship the jackeries on a ship because it's classed as dangerous goods. So uh, from the US, we couldn't find a way of doing it. Only with FedEx and it was 2000 pounds. So we said no to that. Um, so yeah, we've given them to a friend. So we're, we're back in Trudy. We've got about an hour now to the port. And uh, yeah, we should just about make it. We've got a time slot of half one, which we won't make, because uh, that's in 20 minutes. Um, so we'll have to we'll call them on the way and just make sure that's all right. But yeah, the port, here we come. We just passed the sign for Hollywood. As a Brit that watches a lot of TV, to see the sign for Hollywood is pretty cool for us. Does that mean Trudy's making her debut in Hollywood? She is. Driving to the port, we were concerned that despite speaking to the shipping agent last week, 
we still hadn't had confirmation that Trudy had been cleared for drop off. So we're 31 minutes away. When we're about 15 minutes away, we've got to call the port to make sure that there is an escort ready for us. Three miles to a port. Why me me? I think that's how you pronounce it. There is so much agriculture that we've seen strawberries, artichokes, lemon plantations. They've literally got so much stuff growing down here. Just 20 minutes before we arrived at the port, we received notification from the shipping company that Trudy was all clear. Talk about leaving it last minute. So when we called the, uh, the port to tell them we were coming, they were like, can you please give us a description of your vehicle, ma'am? So Marianne kind of said, well, it looks a bit like a ProMaster van, uh, but a lot of people think she's an ice cream truck. She's got lots of stickers. <laughs> you have arrived. That's the port. And then they should be sending a escort truck. Is it that one, maybe? Somebody wants to know You can go through there. It's not him. He might not be here yet. Yeah, so I can't see the escort yet. This is definitely the port, people. Our escort's arrived. Woohoo! Okay, so it sounds like they're going to let us both into the port. We've just given our passports to them to do the security check. And then we'll go in with the escort. We've got the paperwork ready. So it should hopefully be quite simple. Five copies of the dock receipt for Trudy. Okay, we're in the port following our escort vehicle. Do you know, this is the nastiest, worst part of our travel adventure is leaving our home. I know. We're going to miss her. I can't believe it. We're going to be at a hotel tonight. Okay, Trudy is in the port. We are out. It was as quick as 10 minutes. Yeah. It was a really, once all the paper was done before, it was really quick. The only problem we have now is that we're not really sure how we're supposed to get back to LA because we're in the middle of nowhere and there's no public transportation. So I'm thinking we're going to try and hitchhike. Let's hitchhike or let's see if we can get an Uber. See which comes first. It feels super weird. One hour and 10 minutes away. To the hotel? To the hotel. Okay. You feel so help helpless, don't you? Without your van and your home Without and you. everything and all our stuff. But you've got me. Do oh. you need something else? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys! Oh my god! I think I know you! You look really familiar, oh thanks for stopping! Frankie, <laughs> <you're really laughs> Frankie and Alex and Mini Paco! <laughs> Meet Frankie and Alex from the YouTube channel FNA Van Life. We've been online friends for some time now, and when we told them our plans, they offered to drive all the way from San Diego to pick us up from the port. What legends! So many things. So many things. Well, it was a pleasure chauffeuring you here. Oh, uh, thank you. It's not over yet. We're going to see you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get our bill in the mail in a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. The bill comes uh, a little yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you my forwarding address. Oh, <laughs> We've checked into the hotel. We're a couple of miles from the airport. Look at this. Are you not happy? I am ecstatic. We have a big bed. That's probably the size of Trudy's bed. So we've got this uh, this hotel room here in LA, overlooking the city, and uh, the airport's a couple of miles that way. I just love when a hotel gives you inspiration. Keep your face always towards the sunshine, and shadows will fall behind you. We have every vanner's dream: a flushing toilet and a big shower. Frankie and Alex are parking um, in the hotel car park. So we're gonna meet them down in the bar for a drink and just relax after the week of craziness. <laughs> Cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for the yeah. lift. Of course. It's an amazing adventure you two. <laughs> and these guys are rock stars. So they are F and A van life. You will may have seen we did a podcast with you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was a great episode. That was about a year ago. More than a year ago. You, had, you hadn't come to America yet. There you go. Yeah, because we were at your sister's house. Mm -hmm. And we had we didn't go south of the border yet. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Even yeah. all the way to Panama and back. Yeah, back. these guys have just been like hanging out in Central America. They have not been and sitting And they have around. the cutest dog, Paco. <laughs> Paco, oh. you get a smile for the camera. Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> But no, I can't. It's a perfect way to end yeah, that North so American much. trip. No yeah. You guys and, got it. Uh, Very glad we could help in some type of way. Oh, uh, you guys are legends. Yeah, yeah. Absolute legends. Likewise.